Hello again, Bob Stockberger with you, pastor of LifePoint Giles. This week we're talking about money. Money, what do you do with it? Jesus teaches about money many times in, in the scriptures. And in, in Matthew 19, we talk about the rich young ruler. And he comes to the teacher and here's the question he asks. He asks, teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? Totally wrong question. What must I do? He's trying to earn his way into heaven. And Jesus, of course, answers him and tells him to keep the commandments and then go sell all of his stuff and give it to poor people. He walked away sad. You remember the disciples freaking out when Jesus said, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich person to get into heaven. They said, how can that be? And those wonderful words, what is impossible for man is possible for God. Because you see, eternal life, salvation is a gift, a free gift. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We are saved by grace through faith. It is not our own doing. It is not about works, lest anyone can boast. It's a free gift that we may accept. Now, most of us struggle with money, and you'll see from my illustration in just one minute, money is probably one of the biggest conflicts on the throne of our heart. Who truly reigns on the throne of our heart? It's supposed to be Jesus. But sometimes money kicks him off the throne. And that is probably one of the biggest struggles that I have had, that you may have. How do I return all the money I have ever made and have right now is a gift from God. How do I give it back? Is it 10%, 12%? Is it before taxes, after taxes? It's irrelevant. We give all that we can that God calls us to give. He wants to be on the throne of our heart, not kicked out by money. There's an old fable <clears throat> in England during the knights and the castles and the kings back in the 1500s and the 1600s. This fable, a great king had a wonderful castle. He was an art lover, bought all the wonderful artworks from Italy, from Da Vinci and all the uh, masters, priceless collection of art. He had one son whom he loved dearly. His wife died during childbirth of this son, and he was the prince. And a big army came, as always. You know, they have to fight off armies trying to take over their kingdom. And the prince was a valiant fighter, went out with the king's army, defeated the enemies, but the prince was killed. The king was distraught, so depressed, he turned his energy, he painted a big picture, a portrait of his uh, beloved son. Wasn't very good compared to all the great artworks that he had in his castle, but it was a picture of his son. And he had a servant named James who loved them both and, and, and worked for them for his whole life. The king, just after he finished that painting, died, his heart was broken. And his kingdom was auctioned off. The auctioneer came up to the stand in the great hall of the castle. People from all over Europe and Britain had come. They couldn't wait to get their hands on some of the priceless art treasures and antiques in this big castle. Here they are in the big hall. The auctioneer pulls up the first painting. It's the painting of the sun that the king made. And everybody just shook their head. Well, that's just an amateur painting. Why in the world would I want that? The auctioneer asked for a bid. No one would bid. How about 1,000 pounds? How about 100 pounds? How about 50 pounds? How about, who knows? I just got called, sorry. Who knows? Nobody bid. All of a sudden, a quiet man, James, in the back of the room, just quietly said, five pounds, five pounds. That's all he had to his name. He was a very poor, poor servant. The auctioneer said, I have five pounds. 
Do I hear another bid? Going once, going twice, sold to the poor man in the back and all the raggedy clothes for five pounds. You get the picture of the sun. Then the auctioneer walked off the stage. Everybody hollered, what are you doing? We wanted to have that, get rid of that piece. We want the good stuff now. And the auctioneer just shook his head and said, you don't understand the king had very specific issues here, very specific instructions. The person who loves his son and would buy his portrait of his son gets all the kingdom. And so that poor servant James received the entire kingdom because he loved the son so much. He gave everything he had. Even though it's a fable, it brought tears to my eyes when I preached this last Sunday. That is exactly what Jesus is teaching us. Vividly shown in that example. Jesus wants us to give us, give him our all. He wants our all. He wants all of our money, maybe not literally, but it's a gift from him. And he wants us to give generously to his local church, his body in the community in which you live. He wants to be the only king on our throne. Not being kicked out every month or so at the end of the month. Well, I can't afford my tithe this month. I've spent too much on this, that, and that. He wants to be the king of our throne. And I pray he will be in your life right now. Pray with me. Father God, indeed, you are the king of the universe. You are the creator of the universe. Lord, I pray, I pray that each of us will commit to make you the king of our throne, the only one we worship. That money and wealth and power, as attractive as they seem to us sometimes, and they will even kick you off of our throne of our heart at, on occasions. Forgive us. May you and you alone be the king of our heart. And may we give you our all. And may we be generous with the money you've given us in tithing that back to you through our churches. Oh, Father, may we love you completely. In your precious name I pray. Amen.